Good morning, everyone. We're back. What's up, pup? We're here, Benny. Yeah. We're here to poly sand. There's a few pavers here and there that are a little damp still, but the sun's coming out. It's nice and breezy. And everything should be dried up nice for us to do polymeric sand today. So right now, while we're waiting for that, we're going to take the pallets that we have to pay a deposit on. Those are about $20 a piece right there, so that's going to be nice. And we're going to take our extra bricks and stuff. We're going to get all this stuff out of here, go get our poly sand, come back. Let's get into the day. Hi. <laughs> Let this sun and the wind do its thing, dry these pavers up nice. We're gonna go get our poly sand, return our pallets. It's probably, I don't know, we got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven pallets, eight pallets. There's one more under here, so it'll be about like $160. It might end up pretty much be uh, changing out for the cost of the poly sand. Benny, what's up, bud? Hey, how you doing? The viewers are going to start telling you you got to quit smoking too. It's not going to just be me. He's maybe like, I'll, well... Maybe I'll listen to them more than anybody else. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you guys heard him. Change Benny's life. Life. <laughs> Change Benny's life. You heard him. Change Benny's life. Life. Leave a comment. Benny, quit smoking. And tell him why. I'm sure we all have an example in our lives to tell him why you shouldn't smoke. No smokers. If you smoke, you can't tell me to quit. <laughs> if you're smoking, you can't tell them to quit? All right. That's cool. Yeah, that's cool. See you later, pup. I'm glad there's a fence there, bro. Either he wants to really, like, see me, or he's not happy with me. I don't know. He knows who Ben Affleck is. <laughs> he knows who Ben Affleck is. He wants a, a signature. He's watched the town. It's in, it's in one of his uh, canine class videos. <laughs> gotta watch the town. You know the uh, big robbery movie, The Town by Ben Affleck? Oh, yeah. Come on, dude. Come on. I'm sorry, dude. That Come reference on. just went way over my head, dude. <laughs> nice. We're off. We're off. We're back. And he's grabbing the machine. We got our poly sand, pallets are returned, They're looking good. It's made by Alliance, Gator Max. is black diamond I'm very excited about that I usually use a shale gray but this is gonna be a darker joint line to match the charcoal border and I'm pretty curious to see what it's gonna look like nice job bud hey, thanks. everything is pretty much dry So I guess to go over the basics of uh, polymeric sand, uh, that's the number one thing. You have to make sure everything is dry. And a good example, even something like this, you see that little spot in the corner that's wet? If you were to go over a paver that had something like that, the polymers in the sand will uh, get stuck into the porous, porousness of the concrete paver. And no matter how much you wash it or sweep it, I mean, you can wash it, but if you don't, get to it really quick it's going to harden up onto the brick and you won't be able to get it off and you'd either have to replace the paver maybe power wash it off and risk damaging other pavers so it's really a bad thing to put polymeric sand on anything wet even if it's even if it's damp just a damp paver is enough to make it get stained by the polymers in this polymeric sand so that's that's number one number two is you have to make sure that the patio that you just built or walkway that you built has the right pitch. Pitch away from the house or whatever structure you have, it has to have the right pitch. If there's any if there's any holes or dips in your patio or walkway, the polymeric sand is gonna seal the joints up and not allow water to go through. I think it's something like 
of the water it prevents from permeating down. So if you have a low spot in your walkway or your patio, it's going to create a puddle. So you have to make sure that in your prep and in your build, you pitched everything correctly, you checked it out with levels, um, make sure everything's proper, there's no sinkholes. And um, if you want to make sure that I did that here, make sure you check out the videos before, a few videos before this one that goes over this entire build from excavation, backfill, <clears throat> to building, to cutting, all that stuff. So make sure you check it out. The only thing we need, we got our two brooms, which I'm going to use the leaf blower. And I'm going to blow all the dirt and stuff out of, make sure they're nice and clean and not wet. We have those two and we have our tamper. So once we go through sweeping the joints once, we'll use the tamper to tamp the pavers, let the, the sand settle. And then what we're going to do is we're going to go through that area again to make sure all the joints are filled up properly. And then we'll keep going with this, the process. Um, you could use a plate compactor with a mat. There's a few specialized compactors out there that are rolling vibra vibratory compactors to, to tamp down areas like this. And sometimes we have that equipment, but today we don't. So we're just going with our trusty old hand tamper. And it works just enough to settle the sand into the joints and let you go through it again and make sure you fill it up nice. So there's really no... Uh, no really rhyme or reason to what you do. They say the best way to do it is to sweep it in at a 45 degree angle with the joint so you're not sweeping with the joint. But uh, every once in a while going straight with the joints is actually helpful. So what we do is we'll just get it all in the joints in whatever way. And then on the final sweep through, we'll really go more at a 45 degree angle and make sure the joints don't get disturbed. Yep. It's nice that the border's wide joints too, dude. That's why I like this stuff. Screwing around poly sanding like Holland stone or something that's really tight. Oh, what a miserable day, bro. Yeah, that's why I like even taking down the ball on, on the edges. Yeah. That's all you need. You still get that joint line that doesn't touch. Yep. These pavers are freaking perfect, dude. I really like them. It's always breezy here, dude. Always breezy here. Now that I have a good portion sweeped in, I'm gonna use my tamper and I'm gonna tamp this spot so that I can sweep over it and then get this area done. Now you can use a pad on something like this if you want. If you have a pad for your tamper, you can use that. But you can also just use it just the way it is. You just gotta be careful. I got a few here that I wanted to tap down by hand. This is when you do your adjustments. It's a little, this corner right here is a little high. So I'm gonna settle that down in there. So you can see the difference in where I tamped. I'll settle down nicely as compared to someone I didn't tamp. So it is ideal to have a uh, plate compactor with a mat um, for a, a situation like this because it's such a big area. But um, you know, sometimes it is what it is. I don't quite. I don't own a plate compactor yet, but I will. Those things are a few thousand dollars. And um, I don't have one on rental right now, so we're using the hand tamper. And it's something that I also stand by that it's enough. You don't need anything more. So if you have a hand tamper and you're doing a small situation, don't be afraid to, uh, to just use that. Uh, the compaction of the, the plate compactor is nice to have, but it's not necessary. So if you got to do it, you can definitely use a hand tamper.
Okay, we're looking good. I'd say we're a little bit more than halfway through. We had 11 bags, we've used six, we have five left, and I'm thinking we're gonna be pretty, pretty close with our estimate here. So you've seen us sweep it out once, tamp it, and then sweep it again. And this is the end result you're looking for. You want the sand just below the top of the paver. So what I'm gonna do now real quick is I'm gonna blow the extra off. Like you can see this stuff right here. See all this little dust here? these pavers so we use our leaf blower on low idle keep the idle low and just blow all the extra um, poly sand dust that's on top of the pavers all right so i have a red max this thing i bought in 2014 i don't know if you can see it too good red max ebz 8500 biggest one they um made i know the newer ones probably have a little bit more power but this is going on eight years old now, Ben. He still runs like a champ, dude. Eight years old. I love it. Doesn't start. Yo, Benny, Yo. that's way better than the gray poly, dude. Dude, I was looking from over there, and it looks like we didn't even do anything. <laughs> it looks mint, dude. <laughs> from now on out, we don't use shale gray. Shale what? <laughs> shale what? Yeah, we do black diamond. Black. You ever heard of black diamond? No? You ain't a professional. This is what you want as an end result after it's blown down. The sand's just below the top of the paver, and there's no excess buildup on the top of the pavers. You like the black diamond, Benny? I love the black diamond. What's the black diamond, you said? Alliance Gator Max Sand G2. That's Alliance, which makes it. That's the color, black diamond. Polymeric sand. It's good, and it says it sets in 15 minutes. Rain safe after 15 minutes, so that's a good thing. Gives you a little bit more uh, trust when you're putting it down. So we're gonna work from up here, down and around the fire pit and end off by our skid steer. I did wanna show you, if you haven't seen the videos before, when we do a joint line up against the house, we keep a good solid pinch and we fill it with that same chip rock that's permeable. That way any water that comes down the siding doesn't necessarily have to get into the polymeric sand and then run down the patio. It actually goes down and into our permeable uh, base underneath the pavers. We are done the poly sand. Ben's about to be pulling up. looks awesome and I kid you not guys 11 bags was just enough there was no extra the last broom stroke that I pushed into that corner over here was the last bit of poly sand we had 11 bags that was wild literally no extra there's 11 empty bags right there I'll push down into this and it's crazy because it said yeah, narrow joints right there, which is what we have. One eighth to three eighths. Black diamond gets 58 to 76 square feet. And I think these joint lines were the, the three eighths mark. They're, they're pretty wide. And then when you get into the, to the corners here, it's a pretty thick joint. So I think we got closer to the 58, 60 mark. If it was 60, um, 
11 bags would have been 660 square feet that it covered because this is about a 650 660 square foot patio so we got pretty much on the low end and it literally just made it i didn't think it was going to be that close to the low end and i was actually worried a little bit that i was gonna have to go get another bag because we were going to be short but we literally had just enough but anyway we're done we're done it's on to the most important part the watering stage we got to water this correctly and i'm going to show you guys how straight joint lines people number one thing number two nice cuts Benny, would you chill out here and have a beer, bro? I can't believe I'm not doing it right now. <laughs> this measurement right here is the same measurement as this right here. And that's how we found our point. And then the same measurement there is the same measurement there. And then we meet in the back corner. So it's very uh, symmetrical. All right, so we're going to... Turn it on, make sure that our thing's not leaking at all. The nozzle's leaking a little bit, but once it gets going, it probably won't. So I'm gonna take what I think I need here. You really wanna be easy on how your hose hits the paver so it doesn't mess up any of the, the joint sand. So the most important part, guys, uh, everything on this patio is pitching this way and pitching this way towards the fire pit with that corner being the lowest so we need to start at our lowest spot um, pitch wise for when the surface water from up there that we're spraying ends up traveling down and goes here our polymeric sand is already set if we start at our high point all our water is going to come flying and rushing down through our joint lines and wash the sand out so number one thing is to start at your lowest point And right now we're just gonna go through it lightly with the shower attachment, get everything pretty saturated. So we don't wanna go too lightly, but we don't wanna go too heavy. Cause we're gonna be going over it again. So we're gonna work our way up. How's it look bud? Our lowest part is all saturated, nice and wet down. And uh, like I said, now that once we go to the high points, the water's gonna come flying down these joints, I'll show you. But we work our way up to the high point. Really don't be afraid to overwater, guys, as long as it's not too much pressure. And what I mean by is you want a nice shower attachment where it's not forcibly blowing the water at the joints. So the shower attachment's perfect and then you really want to saturate it. You want to get as much of the water that you're spraying right now down through the entire joint. Because once the top layer of polymeric sand is sealed up and hardened, you can't really get any more water down to it. So this is really your only shot to truly saturate the joint and you don't want to be bashful. So now that I'm at the top right here, you're gonna see all this water I start spraying is gonna come down towards me. And there's a little, uh, little bit of a white film in it and you wanna see that. That's what you wanna see. You know, the polymers are getting activated. All the water is pitching down towards the lawn and it's flowing right off the pavers and it's also traveling down towards the fire pit so with that pitch um, you know the surface water is always going to drain right off the top of the patio so we want to get this area pretty wet now 
now that it's already been activated. It's a big patio, so we gotta do this one area. Focus on it, make sure it's done right, and then move to the next. It's gonna be a nice uh, hot day today, so the more water, the better. There it is, poly sand's all done. You guys really saw how much I watered it. Don't be bashful. Once you've sprayed it down lightly at the first, um, your first once over with the hose, the poly sand should settle nicely to where you can really saturate it. You can see our water's flowing down here. This is like one of the main drain points right here, you can see. The water's going right off. It's also coming down these pavers, down into our fire pit, through our chip rock around it. This is acting as a drain right now. And uh, I've had some people comment saying that that's not something they would do. They like to poly sand around their fire pits, but I think that's an extremely helpful way to get the surface water to permeate into the ground. And um, also, like I said before, if you have a fire where you need to put it out with some water, you want the water that you're spraying around the pit to be able to go straight down into the ground instead of having to wash down over your patio. So now we just got to figure out what to do with the edges. I was going to loom them and put grass seed, but I think I'm going to talk to the customer first because the grade is a lot, uh, a little bit higher on most of the area than the patio. So I'm thinking maybe we do a stone apron around it, but I'm going to talk to the customer about that. So we're going to leave the loom here and leave the, leave the job just like this until we come back and figure that out. So that's that. I hope you guys enjoyed this video of how to polymeric sand concrete pavers. Uh, whether you're doing a walkway or a patio, whatever it is that you may be doing, this uh, the way that we did this can be applied in any sort of paver work. And it's a very important thing. I know some people use sand or just a regular sand and not a polymeric sand. Uh, I just don't agree with that. I think a polymeric sand is very helpful for a concrete paver patio's lifetime. It seals out water, helps, helps the surface water get off of the patio, and it truly locks the pavers in extremely tight. Once all this polymeric sand is set up and hardened, it is extremely hard to pull out a paver in this patio. And again, we also concrete the edges, so this patio is gonna be strong. So if you're in business for yourself, uh, you may be wondering if I warranty these, this kind of work, and I do. I warranty it for five years. I'm in Massachusetts, and um, the way that I see it, if a, if a project lasts the first five years of its life, going through freeze-thaw cycles in the winter over and over again for five years, and you don't have to fix anything, then um, pa past five years has nothing to do with the installer, and it was um, a job well done. So that's what I do. I offer a five-year warranty on my install projects. So if you guys found any value in this video and you learned how to polymeric sand like the title told you to, hit that like and subscribe. Benny, we're saying goodbye. Bye. Adios. Peace.